Right, we're going to go ahead and open in prayer. Uh, first, I just got to thank God again for the technology that allows us to gather together while we're apart. And uh, praise Him daily for that. Uh, the conference calls, and, and now we're all gathered together here for a message today on the Sabbath with uh, everybody in the comforts of their home. Some of you are probably not dressed appropriately, but you're in the comforts of your home. Amen? Amen. And so it's, it's your heart that God's looking at, not your clothing. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you right now again for this technology. Lord, I just thank you that we can, that, that, that the Holy Spirit goes into each and every home or, or uh, onto the mobile devices or even the TV, wherever everybody's at. Lord, you've brought us together, yet we're apart. Lord, I just ask that you prepare our hearts, that we all receive this message the way you want us to and that we apply it to our personal lives so that we all become changed today for your glory and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name. And all his children said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, it's uh, another powerful message. As uh, the guys and gals that are in Bible study with us know, we're, we're, we have been studying all of Deuteronomy. We finished and we went into Joshua recently. And... Uh, We, uh, we are surrounded by God. We are truly surrounded by God. That, and that is the title of the message today. And, and we see this over and over again, even going all the way back to the Old Testament, that we are truly surrounded by God. But yet, I've got to ask you, do you feel surrounded by God? Do you feel His holy presence during this time? Because I can tell you, that my Jesus is before me, he's behind me, he's beside me, he's all around me. I am surrounded by God, and I do feel his holy presence. But i got to ask you, do you feel his holy presence today? Do you truly feel it? Because what time, there's no time like today <coughs> that we should feel his holy presence. We, uh, we've never been in a situation like we're in today. We have, uh, we have come to a, a spot in our lives that we're uh, experiencing something that we've never experienced before. But yet it didn't knock our God off his throne. Our Lord Jesus Christ knows what's going on. And it's during this time that I see a lot of people that are negative. Uh, they, they've expressed their anxiety. They've expressed their fears on social media. Uh, some personally with me face to face about some of the things they're dealing with. And others over the phone about... Um, their their worries and I and I, I I always come back on that this that this too shall pass and that my God is still in control our God is totally in control of this situation what better time right now than to turn your homes from fear and allow your home to become a sanctuary yes, see our home should already be a sanctuary and <laughs> the head of the household should already be the high priest of that house but yet some of us have not done that. And yet to today, during these times, what better time than to turn our house, everybody, all of you, turn your houses into a sanctuary. Amen? Amen. And that you as the head of the house become the high priest of that family. And dedicate yourselves. Dedicate your house. Loose the Spirit of God within your homes. Amen? Amen. Don't waste your time in front of uh, the mobile devices, uh, downloading games or w going in through a, watching a, uh, what do you call it, where you just keep watching movies and movies and movies, going on a movie binge or, uh, anyway, marathon, movie marathon. Uh, spend some time in devotions. Uh, spend more time meditating in the Word of God. You, when this time does end, if you have done that, you will come back more spirit-filled than ever before, and yet you were at home and away from the body of Christ. Now's the time. Now's the time to get even closer to God. Turn your homes over to God. Completely over to the Lord. The people are the church, not, the, not this building. Yes, I want to be together, but God, in God's time we will be back together. But what better time than to get yourself ready spiritually. Get your homes ready spiritually to become part of the body. More than you ever have before. Now, if possible, we do need to be inside this church when the doors are open again. And, and, and right now, God's talking to some of you because you've sit back <coughs> in a lackadaisical manner. You, you've sit back and you've only come to uh, the building 
on occasions instead of every time the doors are open. And uh, God's talking to you now. Some of you all that don't even go to this church that you've just tuned in, <clears throat> God's telling you, you need to start going to church when this is over. You need to start being part of a body somewhere, a local congregation that you can, that you can fellowship with and lift one another up. And the Word of God does tell us in Hebrews, it tells us not to forsake the gathering of one another, that we, we, should, le we, we should lift each other up. We should encourage each other. And that's, that's the Word of God. So um, don't convince yourself the lie that Satan tries to spread out that says we don't have to go to church to a church to be part of the body because the word of God does tell us that we should gather together. Amen. Yes, amen. In Hebrews 10 25 it says let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Somebody needed to hear that. Somebody in the habit of not meeting up anymore. But let let's us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. That day is approaching more and more. We are getting towards the end times every day. Amen? Yes. More so. This quarantine is a blessing in disguise. And I don't see that being said enough. It's a blessing in disguise for us to become more intimate with the Lord in our prayer and our meditation. Uh, our response to the Word of God right now, and this may hurt some of y'all sitting there on your couch, that's sitting back with an attitude of, I don't even know why I'm watching this. I don't even know why I'm wasting my time. I'll wait till the church opens back up. But see, if you have an intimate relationship with God, it doesn't matter where you're at or how you're dressed. It's how you're receiving the Word of God. Yes, it's not even from who you're receiving it. It's how you're receiving the Word of God this morning, right here where you're at. And then along with some other things is your prayer. Your prayer should have become even stronger now. You should be more fervently praying than you ever have before during times like this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Many people have shared with me that they're doing that. That's become common practice among a lot of people that didn't even pray before. And then I must say, what about your giving? Because your giving is so that three chord that I, that I talked about just a few weeks ago, one of the sermons about the prayer, giving, and fasting. And it's like a three chord rope. It's so strong. It's so powerful. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised by one of the church members that showed up at the house unannounced and wanted to pay his tithes. <clears throat> and he handed me $300. And I said, Brother, I didn't know you paid so much in tithes because I don't usually take care of this. But now, because of the pandemic, I'm receiving the money at the house and stuff. And he says, oh, no, I don't. But I got my stimulus check. And I thought, wow, what a humbling experience because um, the, the body of Christ knows that they always give 10% back to God. He provided that stimulus check, didn't he? Not the government. Amen. God provided that. God's guidance is what allowed that. So... Your prayer and your giving and then, of course, fasting. All of this tells you where your relationship is. It will reveal to you. If you're sitting there and you're excited and waiting and you're, you're ready to grasp that next morsel of Scripture or the next good word that God brings out of this useless dirt suit that I'm wearing and, and, you, and you grab a hold of that, then that tells you your relationship. So it's about where it needs to be. If you're there with a critical spirit, you should have probably found something wrong already and you're ready to dial in another channel. I don't know. Have you ever noticed in 2 Timothy chapter 2 that Paul, he's encouraging Timothy to get the word out. No matter what, get the word out. Now listen, Paul was in prison. <laughs> he was in prison. Amen? Talk about being quarantined. He was in prison. And we're, we're not having to deal with that, amen? I mean, see, what the word of God is telling us is that the word is not bound. The Word, God's Word is not bound. Yes, we might be stuck here in our houses or I might have snuck into the, the, the church to give this message with just the family, but the Word is not bound. It's always there. Even till the ends of this earth, the Word is always going to be there. Amen? This world will pass away, but the Word will be forevermore. Amen? It is, the Word is not in chains. Amen? Amen? And so, if you're allowing this technology today, you think Paul had it. He had to write a letter and sneak it out or however it was done for sure and, and get to Timothy so Timothy could spread the word. He was writing sermons for Timothy to preach. Amen. Amen. And so, God's doing the same thing right now. Some of y'all may have tuned in and don't even go to church. Well, God got you here for a reason because this is the word of God for you. Yes. And if you, if you came expecting, just listen to what God's got for you today. See, if you'll let God loose in your house, and let the Spirit take over, then it becomes the sanctuary. 
too many people focus on the fact that we just can't get together. We are together right now if you're listening to this. Amen. God, God is not bound. The Word is not bound. He's ready to move in your life today. He wants to move in your life today. There's no quarantine that can stop a healing. Amen. There's no quarantine that's going to stop a healing. There's no quarantine that's going to stop the restoration or deliverance of whatever you need. Quarantine can't stop hope. You can stop hope. <laughs> you, you can stop it. But the quarantine don't. This stops. Our hope and faith in God will stand forevermore. If we truly feel the presence of God and we are surrounded by God, He's always there. No quarantine or virus can stop God's forgiveness. It can't stop God from flowing. It can't stop God from bringing you a salvation that's so much needed. No quarantine can do that. In fact, I believe there's probably somebody this morning or even in the middle of the night, whenever you're watching this, that you're tuned in and didn't know why. Well, it was just for you because you need to give your life to the Lord. And, and, and you may have even made a, a statement to yourself. Well, if I get a chance to give my life to the Lord, I'll do it. Well, now's the time. Amen. And all the blood-bought saints, every blood-bought saint that already has a relationship with God, you can pray with me. But those that don't, don't have a relationship, now's your chance. It's not an altar call and you're in the privacy of your home. You don't even have to come up. You don't have to raise your hand. You're sitting there right now and there's tears in your eyes because you're like, man, I can't believe this is fixing to happen. And you're fixing to give your life to the Lord because the Spirit of God's moving. You have loosed the Spirit of God in your house. Amen? Amen. If that's what you want to do, let's, let's do that. And all, all the blood-bought saints, pray along with and believe that there's a sinner that hasn't given his life to the Lord because we're all sinners. <laughs> but there's a sinner that hasn't given his life to the Lord that's a fixing to. Amen? Let's pray. Just, just repeat after me. Just say, Father God, Father God forgive, me forgive me of all my sins. All my sins. Lord, I'm Lord, I'm sorry that you had to let your Son, you let your son die, on die on the cross for me. But thank you, but thank you for so much love. So much love. That unconditional love. Yeah. Lord, I thank you that Jesus is raised from the dead. He's at your right hand. He's interceding for me. Lord, be the Lord of my life forevermore. Amen. If you prayed that and you never knew the Lord and you meant it, you are a blood-bought saint of God right now. You, your life's changed forevermore just simply because you prayed that prayer in the privacy of your home, in the bedroom while your mom and dad was downstairs doing whatever or because your spouse was separated and you didn't, it don't know. I don't know the situation, but everybody, everybody has their story. But if you said that, wow, I could quit the message right now because one salvation is worth all of this. Amen. One salvation is worth the whole quarantine. Glory to God. This week, <coughs> during uh, morning prayer and devotional stuff like that, the Word of God, it came to many of us where He said, I once had my church quarantined before. Do what? <laughs> I just got done saying that we've never crossed this before. We've never been here before, right? Well, we haven't. But man, oh man, this isn't the first time that God quarantined the church. Got you thinking, huh? When? When did God quarantine the church? Well, if you look at Exodus chapter 12, most of y'all are going, oh man, Exodus. Yeah, I know what we're talking about. They were told to go into their homes and don't come out. So all of you that's still having a family barbecue in your backyard, you got it made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were told to go inside their home and don't you come out. You're going to put the blood around your post and you're going to stay inside. And I can guarantee you that during that time, they loosed the Spirit of God in their house. They did worship and pray to their God. Amen? They did. <laughs> Constantly. Glory to God. We're going to read Exodus 12, 5 through 7. And it says in the Good News Bible, it says, you may choose either a sheep or a goat, but it must be one year old male without any defects. Then, on the evening of the 14th day of the month, the whole community of Israel will kill the animals. The people are to take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and above the doors of the houses to which the animals are to be eaten. Amen. And then you go down to 11 through 13, and it continues. And it says, you are to eat it quickly, for you are to be dressed for travel with your sandals on your feet and your walking stick in your hand. It is the Passover festival to honor me, the Lord. On that night, I will go through the land of Egypt, killing every firstborn male, both human and animal, and punishing all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood on the doorpost will be a sign 
to mark the houses in which you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and will not harm you when I punish the Egyptians. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of that scripture this morning. May you already have, have received that message that God wants you to receive on a personal basis. See, they, they were to worship and they were to turn their houses over to the purpose of God. Period. That's quarantine, isn't it? I must ask you, are you doing that right now? Are you turning your house over to the Lord? Are you dwelling on the negative? It's all around us. The coronavirus is around us. And that's what people see all around them. But what's, what's the title of the message? God surrounds us. Amen? Yeah. We are surrounded by God. And if you truly feel that presence, then you don't feel the anxiety. And you don't feel the fear and the worries. You don't even listen to the fake news. You just you move on with what God's wanting you to do within your own household. Whether you get this virus or not is not the point. The point is, are you prepared to meet Jesus Christ? Yeah. Some of y'all just, just, just made yourself available to God by giving your life to the Lord. And many blood-bought saints prayed in agreement that there was going to people give their life to the Lord. Which means you're prepared in your way. But now, loose the Spirit of God in your house. Allow Him to take over. Turn your house into that sanctuary. The, the COVID-19 is going around right now. And it ought to cause everyone. Every believer, every blood-bought saint, every sinner, every backslider, people that have never given their life to the Lord to fill the churches and get right when the doors open back up. But what better time now than to prepare yourselves for that and come before the Lord right there in the privacy of your home. We are living in the last days, folks. This is a worldwide pandemic, but it is a favor. It is a sign from God to get ready. I mean, He's letting us know it's a time to get ready. Some of us were lukewarm prior to this. Hopefully you're getting fired up for God and not dwelling on the things that you can't do. So many of us do, I know. So many have shared with me. So I, kn I know even personal uh, uh, testimonies of people talking about the bad in their life. The, the author of this sermon looked up corona because that's the title of the virus, coronavirus. And looked up the different definitions. So I followed along and did the same thing. And it has multiple meanings. One of the most common is a circle or being surrounded. Miss. Corona means to be surrounded. And so many people feel surrounded and choked off by the virus. Their life. Because of the corona around them. Amen. Another dictionary says it's a circle of light or a halo. I like that one. Amen. That surrounds the sun or the moon. And if you look that up, you'll see that. And it's also called the sun's corona, if you will, or glow. And amazing enough, there's another definition in a different dictionary that calls the circular chandelier in a church the corona. <laughs> Didn't know that. Amen. But after reading all these definitions and others, a lot more than I'm not sharing here, don't have enough time, the Lord spoke and He said, the world feels surrounded by the coronavirus. And that's true. Because you can't go anywhere. You can't look at anything on the internet or, or the TV. You pop up. You, you're getting pop-up ads on your mobile devices. And it's about the coronavirus. They're full of anxiety. The world's full of anxiety and fear. But the church needs to understand. You need to understand. Amen. That your God has surrounded us by His Spirit. Amen. God's surrounded each and every one of us. By, so we got the corona of God. <laughs> we got the corona of the Holy Spirit. You should have that. You should feel that. You should believe that. Amen? Amen. This is a time to trust God. This is a time more than ever to trust God. Believe in what He can do. That He is the God of gods. The Lord of lords. The King of kings. He is in control of all things. Amen? Amen. This is the time. In the future, when all the saints are going to... This is good in Revelation. In the future, we'll all say, you want to talk about the Shekinah glory of God. Amen? And we read in uh, 21... 23 in Revelation, basically it tells us that Jesus is the Son, S-U. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The Son, S-O-N, is the Son, S-U-N, of heaven. They don't need no Son, S-U-N, because the Son, S-O-N, is the Shekinah glory, and so bright, amen, piercing the darkness. That is the lamp, if you will, in heaven. Glory to God. This world has a coronavirus, but we have the corona of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He will keep us. He will sustain us. 
He will provide for us. He will protect us. No matter what comes our way, our God will do these things for us. He will never leave us or forsake us. I want to, I, I open talking about, uh, we finished in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy chapter 34, uh, the feet of the Israelites, the, they're lined up at the Jordan on the east side. But in Joshua, we just got through the first three chapters in our Bible study last week, and we read, that they were somewhere where they'd never been before. Amen. Joshua 3. We read that the children of God find themselves where they'd never been before. Amen. And that's where we are now. I've already said that. We, we are where we've never been before. We can parallel ourselves with the Israelites in Joshua. First three chapters. Being where they'd never been before. Getting ready. Getting ready to have to fight Jericho. Their face was something that they've never had to fight before. And, and our Jericho is the coronavirus. Amen. Our, our Jericho right now is this, this fake news, the media, and all the, all, all the stuff that's going on around us trying to choke out the Word of God. Some people that didn't even think about tuning in today to watch this, that was one of the things on their minds. Man, I, I don't have time for that right now. You know better time right now. Amen. Amen. Here's the thing. That was in verse 4. That's when we read, read about they'd never faced it before. And in verse 5, how did they prepare for it? This is how we got to prepare. In verse 5, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Amen. But you don't miss this. I got to ask you, are you consecrating yourself? That's what all this has been about since I said we're surrounded by God. Are you consecrating yourself for God's work? Have you allowed Him to surround you? Because He's there. But do you feel it? Is your spirit, sens spirit sensitive to His Spirit and the Holy Spirit calling you what to do? If you're consecrating yourself, then you feel these things. Which means you also have and believe with all your faith, with all your mind, with all your heart that this will too pass and God is in control. You know, the ark crossing over the Jordan River was a sign of God going before the Israelites. And that's what God's doing for you and me now. He's going before us. He's prepared us. He's, he's allowed this to happen so we can get prepared spiritually. Our homes get prepared spiritually. Our temples be prepared spiritually. And we need to have an open ear and an open heart to God, the voice of God during this difficult time. We need to be the light around those that don't have a relationship. And it saddened me. It's really saddened me. And I have a, I have a heavy heart for the believers that have shared with me and I've shared with them that we got to let that go and we got to be the light of this world during this dark and perilous time. We need to let our light shine. People focus on, well, you aren't meeting at church. You must not have the faith. That's just common sense. Amen? Amen. That's just common sense. We are meeting. That's what God's looking to see. Can you deal with change? Can you meet and allow the Holy Spirit to move while you're sitting there comfortable in your recliner? Amen? Amen? There's a lot of voices surrounding us, all kinds of news, but we need to be tuned into God's channel. And listen to the word of God. Don't forget we're surrounded by the corona of God's glory. God. Forget the coronavirus. Amen. The corona of God's glory. That should change our attitude for those of us that have been dealing. It's a word of encouragement for each and every one of us. And for those of us that have already been doing certain things. It's for us to move that next level of intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. More time in devotion. More time with him. All it took for Joshua and Israelites to ca capture Jericho was worship. And how is your worship? I'm just asking you. They walked around the city before it fell. They shouted before. They shouted in worship when the trumpets blew. Before the ground shook. Before the walls fell. Before they took Jericho. Before the miracle, folks. And that's what it amounts to. God's waiting for you to worship Him. I think if, the, if we could have a revival in this country, in America, during this time, that what would happen is... We would be back in the church house a lot faster. I believe, and, and those of you that, that, that do follow uh, uh, the, fa um, the YouTube channel, go back and look at Martha's, Martha's doubt and Mary's faith. Amen. Because I believe with all my heart that it's our faith. You, it, I don't want to get onto a rabbit trail, but does our faith motivate Jesus? Does it motivate God to do what he wants to do? Can our doubt Stop him in his tracks. You need to go back and look at that message. Mary's faith and Martha's doubt. So, in the same sense, is it possible because of our negativity and us focused with anxiety and fear 
and doubt. And what's the outcome going to be? And we ain't turned our houses over to the Lord Jesus Christ. We haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to spiritually clean our house and become the leaders that we need to be and have a sanctuary at home that we're going to continue into this, this pandemic. I wonder if we could have a revival starting today. This thing could be over any time. I know my God could stop it today. Yes, Amen. Did, yeah. Glory to God. Now's the time to worship. I pray we never go back to normal too. I've heard people say, well, we'll never be normal. It'll never be normal. Well, I hope it's not normal. I hope those that were, that were lukewarm in the Lord were going to come back on fire and always stay on fire. That this, this house stays full. Amen. This, and every other church, not just highway to heaven, every church stays full. That they have to build on. To, to take on more people that want to worship and be together. So I ask you in closing, are you surrounded by God? Do you feel his presence? Because we, we read in Joshua that because they were obedient, the miracle happened. And we have to be obedient. I know there's people that listen to this this morning and realize there's some things they're not being obedient. And it's time to be obedient. There's nothing too hard for God when we trust in him. And when we, when we stay holy and sanctify ourselves, consecrate ourselves with worship for him, this world is surrounded by the coronavirus. But you are surrounded by God. Hallelujah. You are surrounded by the corona of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that should be a, we should be cheerful about it. Yes, amen. Don't go back to like Adam and Eve. They had every tree, every fruit but one. And it was that same attitude all the way back in Genesis 3 that caused the fall of man. Amen. Don't focus. Don't focus on what you can't do. Focus on the fact that you can be in the Word of God. You can pray more. You can have devotionals with your family. Yes, amen. It's all about our relationship with Him. His glory shines from us when we do that. Yes, we don't even have to say nothing. People will see it on us. Turn our hearts and homes over to Him and trust in the Lord always. Amen. I'm praying, I'm believing. I'm expecting that each and every individual that's watched this is going to want to be the shining light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's another way you can do that. that with today's technology, this is a watch party. And you've watched this on Facebook. Or maybe you've went to the YouTube because it'll be there later too. But the one thing that you can do that so many people don't, they might share it. But what about having a watch party with your family? Having a watch party with those that you know in your family and close friends that don't even go to church. And to say, hey, I know you don't go to church, but I really want to share this one message with you. I won't bother you again unless you ask me, but just watch this one with me. I'm going to start a watch party. I want you to watch this message because I think this is a good word of encouragement to any and every non-believer. Not to mention you had a chance to give yourself to the, to the Lord, give yourself over and let him be the Lord of your life during this message. That wasn't in the script. That was all the Holy Spirit just for you. Yes, Let's pray. Father God, I thank you again for a powerful message. Lord, I thank you for the coronavirus. I truly do. I thank you that it, that it is a, a sign from you. It's a chance that you have given us the favor to become more intimate with you during this time. Just like the Passover, Lord. Just like all of those that had to die. Lord, I just I thank you right now for that for that time. I'm praying that each and every one of us is going to take it to heart and that we're going to allow ourselves to become more intimate with you. That we'll use this time to, to spend with you and we'll turn our homes into the sanctuary that it needs to be. That our homes become the church and that the, the leaders of the, of the household become the high priest of that household. And Lord, that we become the shining light, the salt of the earth. And that we, 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 that you start through us a revival in this land. We ask all this in Jesus' name. And all his children said, Amen. Amen.